Temporary Assistant Chief Constable of Surrey Police, Fiona McPherson, has admitted that the force hasn't always responded in the right way over known police and police staff who perpetrate abuse and violence against their partners and family members. Well, why would they when these types of people who are seemingly sought out by the police these days? In March 2020, the Centre for Women's Justice submitted a super complaint to Her Majesty's Inspectorate of Policing, referring to 19 cases involving 15 different police forces, highlighting systemic failures that women are experiencing when reporting domestic abuse perpetrated by police officers and others employed by the police. Although there's no mention that they brought up abuse against men. And whilst I appreciate the organisation is the Centre for Women's Justice, abuse happens in many forms and against both men and women. So I would have thought for this example, it would have been about abuse in general and maybe not specifically about abuse towards women police or women partners of police. Temporary Assistant Chief Constable Fiona McPherson said this complaint led us to immediately undertake work to understand the realities of the themes raised within the super complaint and how these themes were approached in our own force. We know that we have had officers and police staff who perpetrate abuse and violence against their partners and family members. We know that we have not always responded in the right way. To the mission right there, folks. We are committed to bringing the issue to light and to ensuring that any member of Surrey Police officers or staff know that this behaviour has no place within our force and that we will do all we can to uncover such wrongdoing. We also want survivors to know that Surrey Police is committed to ensuring that they will be listened to and supported and that the additional considerations of the workplace element will be recognised and responded to. The super complaint is said to highlight 11 common themes relating to the way that police handle domestic abuse allegations against police and police staff. However, not all 11 elements relate to Surrey Police. The force is said to now be committed to ensuring that victims will be listened to and supported and that the additional considerations of the workplace element will be recognised and responded to. Now, isn't it it's just a shame that they're more concerned about their own over the general public who face similar situations? I've reported here on the channel a few cases over the past year where people have been seriously injured or killed because of police inaction to deal appropriately with domestic abuse and violence. But so long as the thin blue line gang is being taken care of, I guess that's all that matters, isn't it? The CEO of East Surrey Domestic Abuse Services, Michelle Blunsom, is said to be working with Surrey Police on the complaint and says 15 forces provided information to the Centre for Women's Justice via a Freedom of Information request and survivors from across the country also bravely, bravely anonymously provided their experiences of domestic abuse at the hands of police officers and staff as part of this process. I know that Surrey Police is committed to having a zero tolerance to perpetrators of domestic abuse. However, all forces, including Surrey Police, have work to do to make this a reality. We know that the very nature of domestic abuse means that it often goes on behind closed doors and that perpetrators often have a public and private face. We also know that survivors have struggled to feel safe in reporting domestic abuse when their partner is a serving police officer or member of police staff. We welcome Surrey Police's proactive approach in tackling this complex and difficult issue and we will work to con and we will continue to work with them to ensure that the lived experiences of those affected by the issues raised in the super complaint are heard. We must learn from those with lived experience if we are to tackle domestic abuse within our society. We want to reassure survivors that the specialist outreach services in Surrey are completely independent from Surrey Police. We want you to feel confident to contact us if you are affected by these issues. Now what gets me is the fact that these people who are allegedly victims of police or police staff abuse in many cases are other police. As we know they like to keep it in the thin blue line family. And these are generally the people who are there to help the public in similar situations. But if they can't report the behaviour that they're being faced with then how can we ever expect them to be able to help members of the public confidently? It's like a paediatrician or a paediatric consultant telling a surgeon, a heart surgeon, what to do. Temporary Assistant Chief Constable Fiona McPherson said, we will be working closely with the College of Policing on any recommendations and learning that comes from their investigation. What is important is how we learn, oh fucking hell, there's that word again, and ensure that we foster a culture where survivors of domestic abuse feel safe enough to be able to disclose in their workplace and believe 
they will receive the service they deserve. Although it should go without saying, a survivor's voice must be heard and listened to. How you learn. Blah, blah, blah. I don't think you realise just how tired that phrase is getting. You purport to campaign against domestic abuse. You continually ask the public to come forward so that you can deal with the issues and safeguard them. But you can't even safeguard your own people. Which shows because you don't safeguard the public. How do you think that looks to us? How do you expect anyone to continue to respect the police when the very organisation that's supposed to be there to protect the public from it can't even protect themselves from it? A very worrying, very worrying state of affairs when you hear that there is a systemic problem within a police like this. In my opinion, the reason many police forces fail to act against their own, unless a member of the public makes a fuss, is simply because they don't want to look bad. But what they fail to realise is that by acting and removing the narcissistic psychopaths from the ranks publicly, the public will start to have more trust and faith in the police. When we hear things like this, it simply makes us wonder why you would rather overlook incidents within the force, almost in an attempt to keep these very people employed. Big thank you to channel supporters, especially these guys, your support is truly appreciated. Don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know your thoughts in the comments as I know many of you will. And until next time, stay safe, look after each other, film the police and other officials.